Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. As always, I'm bringing you another awesome, awesome interview this evening. I have on the phone with me right now, from the band Hudson Hank, Mr. Sammy Oates. Sammy, what's going on, brother? How are you doing, Mr. Bod Father? Good to, uh, <laughs> good to be on the horn with you. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming on the show and taking time out to do this interview. Let's talk about your guys' new CD that's out right now called Daybreak. Let's talk about a little bit about it. What can fans expect from this CD from you guys? Well, Daybreak is our debut record. came out uh, late September on our label, Levada Music Group. There's a lot of textures on this record. We uh, generally, you know, we, we like ambient rock quite a bit, and you can definitely hear some um, more ambient influences there. But uh, uh, there's a lot of textures, a lot of layers. We wanted it to be, you know, accessible you know, on many different levels. So, you know, whether you're coming at it from, you know, a rock and roll perspective or you want something a little bit deeper, we try to, we try to make it listenable on a, you know, on a number of different levels. Uh, hopefully we've achieved it. I don't know. That's up to you to decide. How's the music scene in your area? Have you guys gotten a lot of support from the local fans there on this album so far? Yeah, so far it's been great. I mean, you know, while this band... Uh, this iteration of musicians is relatively new. You know, all the musicians, we've all, you know, been on the road. We've toured to collectively 50 states and over 25 countries. And, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the musicians also play on Broadway shows and in orchestras, as that is, uh, I also have done that myself. But uh, this is where we connected. So, yeah, in the, in the last, you know, we've been playing for about a year. And we went from playing a local, uh, kind of a local divey bar in Nyack, New York, my hometown, to, you know, playing at the Bowery Ballroom and Gram- headlining Gramercy Theater, larger venues, you know, and the crowd's been great. And I think sometimes, you know, we're playing and, and people don't uh, quite have a handle on us yet because they haven't uh, quite had the chance to hear us. But uh, every show, it gets better and better and more people come out and the word is kind of slowly being spread. I mean, New York is such a huge, it's such a huge market for music and you know, the consumers are very intelligent, so we have to keep uh, being aggressive and, and coming up with new stuff to play at every show. Now, I know this is an instrumental track off this album, but I really like Faceless, Nameless. I really... Oh, yeah. That is really cool. This album is really cool, so I suggest anybody who's listening to the show, please go out and, and check these guys out. Support them as always. You know, also, too, I wanted to say, how does it feel, man, when you have all the fans sing along to your guys' music? How does that make you feel, you know, with this debut album now and how everybody's coming along with it? It's pretty incredible when you, you know, when you when you get feedback like that from an audience. I think, uh, you know, I think the hardest part of having a band is, is communicating the live show to the, you know, to the audience and to the fans. And, you know, when you get a response like that, people know your lyrics that's uh, it's a really it's a really special feeling that's for sure what do you hope that fans take away from this album well i mean i i think just with music in general it's uh you know it's music for me and i know for the rest of my band it's uh sort of a it, it gives us spiritual freedom you know it allows us to feel however we want to feel regardless uh there's no there's no federal tax on uh, on that so right. so so, you know, what we kind of hope is that uh, when people come out to the shows or listen to the record or get into our music is that they can uh, take from it what they want. You know, it's it's not just about what we have to say. It's how, it's how you feel when, when you listen to the music. It's mm-hmm. uh, what moves you, you know. Does everybody in the band contribute to writing on the songs, Sam, or how do, how do, you, all work, or how do you all work that out? Well, this, this record was, uh, was all my songs, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of... Uh, you know, when you when you set out to, to write a record and to go all about it, there's there's a lot of expenses. So, mm-hmm. you know, and living in New York, it's it's pretty it's pretty difficult uh, financially, uh, oh, yeah. especially as a musician. So, uh, as most of us struggled, I I sort of put you know, I sort of put the uh, financial uh, risk on my plate, and so most of the songs are mine. And except for the faceless name that's your favorite, I actually collaborated with a, a guy I used to be in a band with called Kiss Kiss. We had some relatively you know, decent success in the mid 2000s. But uh, my friend Josh Nash helped me write that one. Otherwise, they're all my tunes. The next couple of records is definitely going to be more of a collective effort. Certainly, uh, you know, certainly I've taken the reins uh, thus far. But um, the band we have now is they're very creative, very intelligent. Uh, I really respect what they bring to the table, and I can't wait to have them, 
you know, bring tunes to the table and, and have us all collaborate on songwriting as a whole because it's, it's just a lot more fun to do it with friends, you know? You know, man, you mentioned something about how crazy it is living in New York, especially financially. I had a couple of friends that lived up there, and they were telling me just for a small apartment was $1,200 a month. And I, Oh, yeah, yeah, I easy. Said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you, know, you make a little bit more money on the gigs, you yeah. know. I mean, I, there's not another town, and you know, maybe except for L.A. L.A. is expensive, too. I don't think there's another town where you can really, as a musician, as a professional musician, make a living, but, uh, you know, you, you don't, at the end of the, every month, once rent gets taken out, you don't have much to show for it, so, Jeez. you know, there's certainly a struggle. That's crazy, but, hey, you know, the love for it, you gotta do it, you gotta do it, man. Hey, ain't no, ain't, ain't no other way, brother. I tell you what, other than yourself, Sam, who else is in the band? Other than myself, my good childhood buddy, I grew up with him, we played in uh, punk and hardcore bands growing up together, his name is Dan Muhlenberg, he plays drums, Simon Kafka, my old college friend. From we went to Manhattan School of Music together in the early 2000s, and he's a he's a great guitar player. He's uh, playing with a lot of great songwriters. He's very very busy on the New York scene, uh, along with his Broadway chops, which are uh, which are incredible. Uh, we have another high school friend of mine who also studied to be classical uh, cellist. Her name is Patricia Santos, and uh, she's just a wonderful musician. The newest addition to the band, Andrew Miramonti on guitar, he's from St. Louis. And uh, he's sort of new to the city. He's only been around for a couple of years, but a great guitar player. He also doubles on keyboards. And we also have an old colleague of mine, Rob Cookman, on uh, keyboard. He's sort of like a Broadway uh, music director. Him and I went on, on the road together the last time I was on the road with a Broadway show, which was the Frank Sinatra musical. And we went all over the States and to Japan. And he's just a great musician and a great friend and a new father. Oh, that's cool. Congrats to him, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll tell him. Who were some of your influences coming up, Sam? I know you mentioned some hardcore punk bands. Let's talk about that. Who who were some of your influences? <laughs> well, you know, when I was growing up, me and my buddies, we had a band. And, uh, you know, we really got into uh, Black Flag and Minor Threat. We got into a lot of the D.C. bands, especially Bad Brains. It was, oh, uh, was a favorite of ours. Nice. You know, we knew how to thrash. And we weren't very serious about it, but we liked to have a great time and jump over drum sets and get real <laughs> crazy. I was actually I was actually playing bass and screaming in the band. <laughs> rather than, you know, singing and playing trumpet, which is what I do now. But yeah. uh, I, I can't really explain the progression from, from then to now. It's, <laughs> that's a difficult one. <laughs> but uh, we were, we were petulant, uh, we were petulant teens with, uh, you know, mohawks and crazy colored hair. And, you know, I, I think we lived a pretty good life back then. You know, we, we grew, up, grew up in Nyack. It wasn't like we were living in, uh, you know, we were just suburban kids, you know. And the cool part about it is, man, you grew up at a time when you could go see these legendary bands like Minor Threat and Black Flag and Misfits and things like that. And nowadays, it's just like maybe in a blue moon you'll get to see them. So it's well, you know, you'll see everybody doing the reunion tours. Yeah. That's a huge cash cow now. So I mean, other than that, I mean, if if you want to talk like early on, you know, that was cool. But uh, one one record that really just changed my life was um, was uh, Radiohead's OK Computer. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that that just uh, I remember uh, you know I think I was 16 uh, maybe I don't even I don't even know yeah. anyhow when I got that on tape I I, I wore that tape right out and <laughs> and I I don't know I, I, I've never been the same since <laughs> <laughs> what can fans expect at a show from you guys and gals well you know on the road we, we might keep it a little simpler but uh, when when we're in New York you know it it's different every time. Uh, like I said, we have a very intelligent music community in uh, in New York City, and they know what they like and they know what they don't like. Yeah. So, you know, they've certainly seen uh, indie bands play before. You know, I'm uh, you know we're a dime a dozen. So every time, you know, uh, we try to keep things fresh. Uh, you know, at larger venues, we'll often have uh, you know four four person string section and a brass section. When we played the Dodger Ballroom, we had uh, 14 people, 15 people on stage. Wow. With the film, with the accompanying film behind us, we're now starting to forge some ties with some some more visual artists and kind of cater our sets to to visual art. We've done work with some some people who have studied. They do more like the graphic stuff. They do it live. Uh, they do live projections and things like that. And uh, that's really always quite fun. Uh, you know, it's hard not to be distracted uh, as a performer, but I think it gives a much more interesting uh, experience to the to the listener. To the viewer, 
So we, you know, generally it's hard to, it's hard to know what to expect. Even for me, you know, right. sometimes it's very last minute hiring musicians and getting the charts ready and getting rehearsals together. It's, uh, you know, kind of fly by the seat of our pants, you know? Right, right. It, it, you know, you, you mentioned about they, New Yorkers, they like what they like and they don't, and they don't like what they like. It, it's crazy that, you know, if, if you're a Yankees fan and they'll sure boo you, they don't care who you are. And that's, that's insane. Yeah, well, you know, I definitely wear my Yankee hat every day, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't make me more liked, that's for sure. When when the fans leave that show, how do you hope that they remember you guys when they leave? Well, we, uh, you know, we try to go and sit at the merch table and be as close to the uh, to the experience as possible. You know, we, we try not to, you know, we never want to play a rock star. Right. We're, we're just regular, we're just regular guys and, and gals, so, right. you know, we try to be as accessible as we can and we, you know... Yeah, I've, I've been trying to keep up on Twitter and Facebook, and this is all new new stuff for me. I'm not very good with the social networking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 does, it, it does take time to get used to if you're not used to using it. It took me a while, too. So Yeah, I, you know, I, I still don't get it, but uh, it's a nice way to communicate, especially with uh, we have a lot of fans out in Brazil and in the U.K., and it's really nice to, you know, just communicate with music fans across the world that's a that's a really special opportunity and you know it's certainly it's certainly flattering do you guys prefer the club scene sam or do you guys prefer festivals what what's your guys favorite thing to do you know what i grew up playing clubs and of course i think i'll always prefer playing clubs but uh you know i think even even some of the bigger venues we've played it's I, you know, we we can make it feel like a club. That's always the goal. You know, I try to I try to make sure even in a bigger crowd, I try to make eye contact, and yeah. I think everybody in the band tries to you know ex, you know create an experience we can all have together. What do you think that Hudson Hank brings to the table for music? Well, that's a tough one, but I will say this: I think uh, you know we we blend a lot of different styles. We all a lot of us have very classical backgrounds and education, so generally we we tend to. You know, the complexity in the music is subtle, and I think, you know, that subtlety in a record will allow people to have a, a listening experience that changes from time to time. So we kind of hope that, uh, you know, there are, there are artists out there like uh, Radiohead or, or Beck or, I, I don't know, the Beatles, <laughs> who every time they went to create a record, something new happened. And yeah. we're definitely aspiring to, you know, create a new experience every time with with our with our training and uh our harmonic and melodic know-how what does it mean to you when you get emails I'm, I'm sure you get a ton of emails and plus on twitter and facebook and things like that but fans telling you at meet and greets as well your music has helped me out through some tough times how does that mean to you oh it makes me feel great i mean you can either have an experience and they're letting you know about it and and it's it's their experience that they felt strongly enough to share with with the band and that's uh that's real special i you know of course i hope we can reach larger audiences in the future and but for now we can we can field all these all these calls and uh well, emails really no one's calling me thank god <laughs> <laughs> but uh it, you know at least we can field uh, you know all these uh, really really wonderful uh you know even if someone doesn't like what they hear it's complimentary enough that uh <laughs> You moved somebody enough to, to, to get in touch with you, whether they loved it or, or, or not so pleased. Yeah, yeah, you're doing something right some way. <laughs> yeah, in some way, you know. Man, I want to thank you for taking time out to do this interview with me. You you guys definitely have support from uh, Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. And uh, anything Oh, you John, you got it, brother. Hey. It was a pleasure, pleasure, uh, pleasure speaking with you and, uh, you know, being on your, on your radio station. That's really great. Pleasure's all mine, man. This is an honor to have you on here. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, support the locals and support however I can help them out anyway. So can you tell the fans who are listening to the show that, that love your music how they can get out to get in contact with you guys and get your new CD, Daybreak? How can they do that? Well, Daybreak is available on uh, iTunes and Amazon, and you can stream the record now on SoundCloud for free. Uh, you can find us, you can get in touch with us either on Twitter, which is uh, twitter.com slash Hudson Hank Music, I believe. <laughs> I'm in the car. I'm stuck in traffic. I don't have any of this stuff anyway. Uh, but Facebook.com slash Hudson Hank. And yeah, get in touch with us. Talk to us anytime. Like I said, we can, we, we generally are able to spend a, a good amount of time on online every day. And uh, it's always nice to hear from, uh, from, from music fans.
around the world. Sam, before I let you go, will you care to do a promo for my show? Sure thing. Hey, this is Sammy from Hudson Tank, and you're listening to the Bodfather on Bod Mayhem Hour. Nice. <laughs> Thank All you, right. man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, first time I've ever done that. I have to be out of the John. Really? That's the, well, hey, I always break <laughs> them in the good way, man. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, hey, brother, thank you so much for having us on. It was really a pleasure. Dude. No problem. Hey, everybody, stick around. I want to thank Sammy from Hudson Hank for being on the show this evening. And I'll tell you what, we got some music coming up from Hudson Hank. And also, too, you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. Awesome, awesome interview. Thank you, Sam, so much. Have a good day. Yeah, I'm getting tongue-tied and burping. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. (laughs)